everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. This week we are hopefully finishing up the complete ensemble of my spring plaid dress. And this week that means we're going to be focusing on the accessories necessary to complete this ensemble, which in this case means making a pelerine and making a new bonnet. Because even though I have a bonnet that actually perfectly matches this dress. Like, I'm not really sure how that happened, how it became such a perfect match. I want a new bonnet. Because apparently in 1836, 1837, like, the trend was majorly for pink bonnets. You see pink bonnets in so many fashion plates, including all of the plates that I have been using for inspiration for this dress. They are all light pink bonnets. So it just makes me feel like I need a pink bonnet instead of a yellow bonnet. I do really like this bonnet. I like the shape. I like pretty much everything about it except that my brim wound up doing this weird bendy thing right here to get the shape like away from the back of my neck. So I'm not really sure. I'm gonna have to figure out how to fix that. But otherwise I am intending to use this same pattern. It's a pattern that I drafted a few years ago when I made this bonnet. And if it's something that you'd be interested in, I have been thinking about trying to get my patterns into like PDF format so that I can put them maybe as like a Patreon perk or so that I can maybe just like sell them separately. So if that's something that you would be interested in, I have done my own patterns for bonnets and other headwear, as well as a lot of sleeve variations and some other things actually, including the pelerine. A lot of my bodices and everything I don't feel comfortable putting out as patterns because other than my Victorian go-to basic bodice block pattern I've kind of interpreted them from other patterns into what I use and I just don't know legally where that right sort of thing goes so probably won't be putting out bodice patterns anytime soon but if you are interested in other patterns please do let me know below because if there's enough interest then that is something that I will put some effort into figuring out how to do. And also, if you didn't know that I have a Patreon, I do have a Patreon. So if you want to support me that way, you can just go ahead to the link down in the description or up above right here and head over and join my Patreon. And that would be super, super awesome because I love my patrons. Okay, so back to bonnets. So making this bonnet is probably a silly idea because if you can't tell, romantic era bonnets are humongous. They're really like the largest things. I mean, this one luckily doesn't have any feathers, so it makes it slightly easier to store. But my other two 1830s hats do have feathers. So basically you're taking something that is this large. I mean, you can see just in scale of it to me, like how large this is. And then you have to figure out how to store them. I literally have a bunch of them on some shelves in a linen closet. And this one like lives in one of those giant Joann's bags. And yeah. So anyway, with my pink bonnet, I don't know yet how I want to trim it, but I have gotten some fabric. I don't have anything like super fancy. This is literally the Casa Collection matte satin from Joann's. I was hoping for something a little bit more pink, but I guess on the plus side, this actually does pretty perfectly match the ribbon that is on the bows and for the sash for this dress. Just as an example, this is the ribbon, this is the fabric. So it's really a very good match. Apparently this is pink this year. You don't get anything bolder, so oh well for that. So this is what I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using buckram as the interior structure. I do have a little bit of buckram left. This might use it all up. And buckram basically needs to be doubled for uh, the structure to really work, especially with a bonnet of this size. So I will show you how I make the hat with like every step of the hat along the way, how I double the buckram, how I wire the brim. I hopefully plan to mull this one, which I have not actually mulled a bonnet yet, but you're supposed to. So mulling means basically to cover the buckram with flannel or something else that makes it look really nice and smooth before you put the outer fabric over the top. So I do hope to do that, though naturally when I went to go get this at Joann's, 
I forgot to buy any flannels. Now my Pellerine is again something that I'm going to use this shape that I already drafted, but I'm going to take these points in the center front out. So otherwise it's going to be pretty similar. And then I'm going to change the color shape to better mimic one of the fashion plates, the main fashion plate that I've based this off of. But that will be what we are working on this week, the Pellerine, the bonnet, and hopefully I can get all of that done. And then at the end of this video, show you lovely shots and video of me wearing the whole ensemble in a garden trying to blend in with flowers because that's that's what I want to do. <laughs> so that's a lot to do so let's get started. So the first thing that I'm doing here is I'm taking my pattern and laying it on top of my old bonnet because I made various markings on this pattern and I wasn't sure if they were accurate or not so I just want to see like what I did and what I should be doing with this. So for example, I made markings out here that says for this brim to go this way, like make the curve more extreme. And um, yeah, I do need that because this says like, for example, add 1.75 inches this way and it's way off the edge of the bonnet. So that is accurate. And it's all of that plus the seam allowance, I believe, which seems like it rings true because like even right here on the inside, I'm definitely about an inch away from where it should go as opposed to the 0.5 inches that it says plus seam allowance. So that is one thing. I know that those are correct. And then the plus the half inch seam allowance. But at the same time, this actually wound up kind of overlapping right here in the center back. And I don't want that. So what I want to do is I want to make this part a little bit shorter this way and also make this outside curve a little bit more curved because that's where it was hitting my neck and I had to curve it up. So that's going to curve a little bit there, but it is going to go farther out there, but it's going to be shorter this way. So I'm going to make all of those tweaks to this pattern and then I'm going to hope that I can actually cut everything out of the buckram that I need to do because I didn't realize that I was almost out of buckram. So yeah, I'm super almost out of buckram, which I guess I didn't remember and or didn't think my next project is going to be an 1830s bonnet that takes up so much buckram because this is all that I have left. So this is like not even a yard, I think. Maybe we're close to a yard somewhere in there. And buckram is not very wide. This is the whole width of the buckram. So I think with careful plotting out, I can hopefully get it cut out of this because otherwise you're not going to be seeing this for a while because I will have had to get more buckram and buckram is not something I can buy locally, unfortunately. So I'm going to attempt to cut two of each of the pieces out of this much buckram. Keep your fingers crossed for me. I have now created a whole new brim pattern. Just so you can see, this is the old brim on top here. So it looked shallower here because it just had lines telling me to go out farther. And then it's a lot shorter here underneath. That is the new curve. Hopefully that will work because I'm not testing it out first. I'm just gonna see if I can get this to lay out twice on my buckram now, along with the crown pieces. So I knew it was gonna be a challenge to lay out and it did actually, Lion, you want to say something? That's from Lion. Anyway, don't mind the squeaking. <laughs> I knew this was going to be a challenge to lay out and actually one of these pieces, the, this piece I think, I had to draw out three times in different places before I found a place that fit. Also, I realized that when I chopped off the length of this before, I actually chopped off too much. So I added about one inch back in, which was why I, one of the times I had to redraw this out. So anyway, I fit them all. This is approximately at this shortest part right here across. It's 38 inches. At the longest down here, it's 42. So this bonnet can be gotten out of that exact length and no shorter because literally I'm like up to the edge. So yeah, uh, good to know. Glad it wasn't only one yard or else it would not have made it at all but at 38 slash 42 inches long, I can get this bonnet cut and that is what I'm gonna do now. 
So now that I have cut everything out, I need to go ahead and make everything have double layers because buckram, even like this good buckram, aka not Joanne's buckram, is not stiff enough on its own for a hat. And so now I need to match these up. And then basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of sew across them in a really large zigzag manner to make sure that they kind of adhere together. There is some buckram out there that you can actually like press and it will stay together. Unfortunately, this is not that and I'm not really sure where to get that. So this you just kind of sew, but then the mulling that you are going to do to the bonnet, that is what makes it so that those stitches and the millinery wire and all of that sort of stuff do not show. So that is what I'm gonna do. I will show you what that looks like when that's all done. And I am doing it to all three pieces, the brim and the crown, all of those. So I'm going to make all of those have the two layers together and I will show you what that looks like in a few minutes. So I don't know how well you can even see this, but you can kind of see those threads right on there. That is what I did to stitch around here. So that just adheres these two pieces together. I did it on all of them. You can maybe see that one a little bit better, I think. And same with on the bottom one here. So it's almost just kind of like quilting them together, but now they are all good. And now actually the next step is to go ahead and run millinery wire on these. So how that works is that a circle of millinery wire goes on here about a half inch in from the edge. Honestly, you could do probably five eighths is, is even a little bit safer because that half inch is your seam allowance and you are going to crinolate out that seam allowance. I recommend marking the half inch with a pen and then just putting your wire in a little bit inside that pen line. And you're just going to zigzag over that on the machine if you are brave enough. If you're not brave enough, you can do it by hand, but my hands don't want to do that. So I'm going to do mine on machine. You can use like a piping foot or even I think an invisible zipper foot that kind of helps you keep it in the channel so your wire doesn't shift around and it doesn't get your, you don't break your needle or anything like that. So I do recommend a foot with a channel in it and you're going to do that on here and you're also going to do that on here. And you, I believe, I'll have to double check my other bonnet, but I believe on this one, I also do it here just to give it more stability. So again, I will have to check on that. This one, by the way, it goes here and then it goes here. So it's basically like, if it goes here, you could actually just use one wire and bend it all the way around. And Lion is crying, so I'm going to go investigate what's going on and then sew my millinery wire on and I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. I realized that I should show you a little bit of the actual sewing process here of how I'm sewing over the millinery wire. So I'm going to attempt to do this and I don't know if the camera is going to get totally in the way. But uh, right now I'm approaching a corner on the brim. So I'm just taking one wire all the way around the brim and bending the corners when I get to the corners like that. So that's what I'm doing here. Since this is the outer part of the brim, it goes like right pretty much by the outside. You wanna be like within about a quarter inch of the edge. And when you get over to the edge here, you want to just bend the wire. Sometimes it's easy enough just to do with your fingers, like that actually worked really well, but other times you might want to have like a flat nose handy. I did use the flat nose for this corner because I had bent it kind of in the wrong place and once you bend it, it's really hard to unbend it. So then I used that flat nose. So then you're just going to, so I'm using my piping foot here by the way. So that piping foot is not just good for piping. And I have my zigzag stitch currently set to a three millimeter width and a two millimeter length and regular tension and all that. And you wanna take this all really very slowly because you don't want your needle to hit the wire or else you will break your needle. Once you get to the corner, you do have to be a little bit careful because sometimes the piping foot right here can catch on where the wire bends. So if you feel like you're not moving anywhere, that might be why. But once I get to the corner here, I will often actually do this with the hand wheel because I want to get my needle right in the corner. So right here, I think I'm right in the corner now, which means that I can pivot, except that the camera is totally in the way of me pivoting. So hats are kind of very large, I should say, 
Romantic Era bonnets are kind of very large to get through a sewing machine, especially once it's wired. So my camera was sitting right here, but now this is going to be in the way. So let's see if I can find a new angle for you. We're gonna go with this and I'll show you a little bit more zigzagging. I will usually, right after I turn the corner, I'll usually still do the hand wheel for a little bit, just so that I know that we're going kind of correctly here. And my wire has a little bit of a kink in it. I don't know if that's from bending it or if it's because that's where it was tied down to my roll of wire. But now I can just continue. So I unfortunately can't get a great angle on this because again of how the brim is shaped and everything taking up so much room. But I wanted to show you what happens when I get to the end here and I have the two ends together. So first I'm going to approach the end doing my same three millimeter wide width that I have been doing. And then as I reach to where the two ends are overlapping together, I increase the width on my machine and I use the hand wheel here for just a moment, just to make sure I can get over. So I'm at a 4.5 millimeter width right now and that seems to be working. And I want to go back and make sure that it doesn't like splay itself right here at the end. So I'm going to reverse. I've turned it off of the auto reverse and cutoff feature that this machine has. So I'm just going to press and hold to reverse, then stitch back over those again, and then do the same thing as it gets over here. Now right here, it kind of wants to splay itself out and I don't want my needle to get stuck on that. So I'm gonna take a pin or other small object and just kind of hold that in place against the other wire for as close as I can until it goes underneath the needle. So there we go, we've got those encased. Now we can go reverse. And just reverse a few stitches, then stitch back over them just to make sure that those stay in place. And if you notice here, I made the overlap go on the inside of the brim as opposed to towards the edge. So right here, my overlap is on the inside and that's because I still want this half inch seam allowance right here. I don't want this to make it smaller, but it doesn't really matter if it goes in a little bit more, especially right here around the base of the crown because that's all gonna be covered with trims and everything anyway where it joins. So that is it. This is now fully wired. So I've got both pieces wired and I can start to actually assemble. But I realized I also haven't cut out any of the other pieces. I still need to cut out the mulling and the poly matte satin for the outside. So that's actually gonna be my next step and more assembly will wind up being tomorrow because it's time for me to go to bed. So good night. So everything is now wired all nicely around like you saw me doing before. And I have cut out my mulling and my exterior fabric. Now I'm a little bit concerned because I don't have much flannel in my stash cause like I never sew with flannel. So I had this gray flannel that was left over from a stuffed bunny that I made. And then uh, it wasn't enough to do the entire bonnet. I've got everything just all laid out here. So I also have this brown flannel that I think was like inside a four part that I made way, way back in 2010. And I think this was like the back side. I don't know what I was doing then. That was like literally the first historical costuming thing that I made. But yeah, so that's what this is left from. So that is going to be the mulling on the crown. This is going to be the mulling everywhere else, including the top of the crown. This is just the side of the crown. So now it is time that I can start to assemble things. So there's a lot of steps to this and I never really remember what exact order they should go in, but I think what I'm gonna do first, also I'm not used to mulling things, so there's that. What I think I'm gonna do first is I'm going to attach the mulling to this bonnet here. And honestly, I think I'm gonna do it in hot glue. I probably shouldn't. I probably should not do that because then it's harder to sew through. 
but I think I'm gonna do it anyway. I did do a little bit of an experiment with hot glue. I tried attaching the mulling to the buckram with hot glue, and then I also tried attaching the pink with hot glue to the mulling, and that does not work. This, you can totally, totally see the glue through. It like changes colors and textures and everything. It's really bad. But doing the mulling to the buckram, there's no visual thing. So I kind of figure that I think I'm gonna try hot glue between these two and then I can sew that to this if necessary and or hot glue in places that it does not show at all. Like for example, if there's hot glue right along the brim here, that doesn't matter because this is gonna get covered with binding and I don't want it farther than like a half inch in or else I'd have to try and sew through it. So if it's literally right along the edge, that's probably okay. Same with in here, if it's on the inside of this, yes, I do have to cut little triangles out of there so I don't want to go past really the wire, but I could put hot glue like right on the inside of the wire. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm probably gonna do most of this with hot glue because I don't have the patience to do all of this with sewing, hand sewing. So time for hot glue. All right, so mulling and the matte satin have now been attached to these two pieces. On this one, it is just on the side that doesn't have the wire. I almost made the mistake first of gluing it to the wire side, but I remembered that the wire still leaves a bump even with the mulling, and so really, I prefer to have the wire inside. Also, when you go, the next step is gonna to be to cut our little crenellations to make these into tabs, and it's just easier to fold this around the wire instead of fold it opposite from the wire. So you do want to have the wire on the inside. So this is glued down with this top part because I know that I'm going to have to cut those crenellations in. I just did little dots of glue on the outside so that I can cut the tabs in between the dots. But then the felt one, it's glued on the opposite side of the wire. And then this I have on both sides. So this is now six layers thick. It is satin, mulling, buckram, buckram, mulling, satin. And this one has glue on the wire on the inside right here. And then here it's like right on the edge that there's glue so that it doesn't get in the way of when I do the binding. So this is also going to be cut into little tabs, which is going to be a super, super pain to do with it now being so thick. So that's gonna be fun. Luckily the wire is there to prevent you from like cutting past when you are forcing those scissors. But yeah, not looking forward to cutting those, but that is my next step. Cut all of these and cut all of these. The other thing that I still have to do is figure out exactly the size of this, but I feel like that is e easier to do once I have already cut the tabs on this because then I can see just how big the top of the crown needs to be. And then I'll just glue that shut in the back. So haven't done that part yet, but time to cut a bunch of little snips. I cut the crenellations on this one. So this is what I mean by crenellations. That's an architecture term if you're not familiar that is like the parts that are at the top of a castle that look like this. Those are crenellations. And I don't know what you would call these otherwise. So that's what I call them. One thing that I did have to do though is that I actually had to move my wire in a little bit because it was too large for the side part of the crown. So I'm hoping that it will fit now. This is something that I will double check before I like release this as a pattern or anything if I do that. Because yeah, this one was just a little wee bit too large or else maybe I measured my half inch in wrong. I suppose that's possible too. So now what I'm doing is I'm covering this part with the mulling, which again, hopefully this won't show up as a different color from the gray mulling. But I'm just going to run a line of glue down the back. I just kind of wrapped it so that it was pretty much in the same place as the back. And I might have a little bit too much overlap. I might cut off a little bit of that excess, but I'll run a little thin bit of glue there to make sure that that stays in place. And then I will take the pink part and do that around, but instead of gluing it, this part does have to be hand sewn. So yeah, you can't cheat when it comes to the outer side because it just looks ugly. So I'm gonna get to that later tonight because I have to go walk lion and have dinner and stuff like that but this is where we are at currently. So I'm doing a few things kind of all at the same time on the hat right now. I am stitching up the back of the crown, but at the same time, I wanted to actually like put the top of the crown in. So what I've done here is I've glued the satin and the flannel down on the inside of the crown. And now I'm doing what I would say is actually the hardest part of making a hat, of getting the 
round top of the crown to actually fit. And that just winds up involving like a lot of pushing and hoping and praying that it's going to actually stay in place. Generally, I like to do this from the reverse side going in like this and pushing it down. You do have to be really careful of the kind of flap from where you've glued it over the top or sewed it, I guess you could sew it, I don't know. And you, cause you don't wanna get that caught up. So you do wanna have that pretty secure. And then I'm going to go around and I'm going to hand sew the very edge where that meets. So I, at this point I need all of my hands and I will show you what that looks like once that is hand sewn down. Oh my gosh, that is so challenging even just to pin into place. But after very much struggling, I did get that all pinned in place. And actually, I think that the ring is the right size because it doesn't seem to be doing any of that like bending out stuff that can happen if it is too large and you've kind of just forced it in there it seems to still be pretty good so that all still needs to be stitched into place but at least it's there I mean literally just getting it in place is the hard part I did remember part way through that I think one of you commented on my 1880s hat video that uh, you could actually just like sew this together first as in the pink layer by itself or the outer layer by itself and then pull it over and I probably should have done that, but uh, again, I remembered it part way through, so it was too late because the other layers had already been glued to the layers underneath. So I had no choice but to just fit it in like I did before. So now I'm gonna sew that, finish sewing this, and then we get to start attaching this part to the brim. So it wound up being really weirdly sewn. Like you can kind of see how sometimes it's farther in on the edge than other times but it is all sewn and my stitches are all nice and small and stuff and I also did the backup so that is all set so now it is ready to get attached to the crown kind of actually I do want to glue down the inside here so this is the flannel and the pink satin that are over the edge so that needs to get all nicely tucked down I still haven't actually done the crinolations on this yet so I need to do that but both of those are quite easy to do just gluing that down and then here cutting the crinolations and those will fold up basically and then they will fit into the hat like that the crown like that so that's all nice and easy and all that gets covered up by the lining afterwards and then also trim and stuff on the outside Ooh, though actually one other thing because I just remembered that this is way easier to do when you do not have the crown attached the next step is actually going to be binding because yeah the binding is so much easier to do when the crown's not attached it's easier to like put it through the machine even as a potential option so I am going to cut my bias binding just a strip of the pink fabric and then put that around the sides here of the edge of the brim and that way also it can like go past and into this and it doesn't have to be as nicely finished because it'll get tucked up into the lining so that's always nice too. Well I'm glad I have extra fabric because this freaking cat went and laid in the mud and then laid on this fabric which was the lining of my bonnet which is obviously not the lining of my bonnet anymore Dora is it? cat shaming. It's time for cat shaming. I know she's so cute. It's really hard to shame her. But oh my god, look at this. This is from her belly. That's how gross she is. Okay, false alarm. This cat is not quite in the doghouse as I thought. This wasn't actually the lining. This was a scrap piece. Haha, -ha, dummy lining. Yeah, Dora, that's for you now. It can be a cape. Your own personal mud cape. So the first side of the bias is on. This is two and a half inch wide bias, by the way, because I measured my yellow bonnet and it's about five eighths inches out to the edge. So five eighths inches times four is two and a half. And I went and I pressed down the one edge because I knew that was gonna be wrapped around and I couldn't press it like once it's on. But then this edge here, I didn't actually press it or anything. I just stitched about a half inch away from the edge. I moved my needle over so that the wire wouldn't get in the way of the foot because at first I didn't and it kept wanting to shove my foot over. So I did move that over. And now that that's all on, this is just going to get lapped over to the other side, which I can't really show you one handed. I'm going to pin that in place and I'm going to sew that part down by hand. And at that point, the brim will be ready to attach to the crown. 
So now that all of the binding has been stitched down all around and all of the little crenellations are cut and just kind of bent back, it is now time to attach this to the crown, which I have glued down all of this on the inside. I don't love it. I mean, it's going to be covered by the band anyway, but it definitely is wrinkly. So I'm not a big fan of what's happened there. And I don't know if it's just because I'm working with this poly material. I'm not used to making hats out of poly matte satin. So this material is temperamental. And I've also gone and I've marked the center front both on here and down on here. So those are going to get put together and then it's going to just be fitted around uh, to the sides. And there should be a little bit of a gap in the back, probably about an inch or two and where it does not come together here. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to glue all of this together so that the tabs glue right into here. They just fit right all into there. And it will probably involve some glue in the layers too because I did actually wind up having to separate some of the layers because the inside of the brim wasn't pulled as tautly as it should. So I have that pinned currently, but yeah, I will need to re-glue where those tabs go, but I can do that kind of while the whole process is going on. So I'll show you what that looks like when it's all together. The brim and the crown are now connected. I have not done the liner bit yet, but that's okay. That can wait for a little bit because now what I'm really starting to think about is how do I want to trim this? Because let's be honest, that is the most fun part of trimming bonnets anyway. And I have pulled out pretty much like half of the trims in my fabric stash, in my trim stash. And uh, yeah, I can't decide what to do. So part of what I do with hats is I will literally just take out anything that I think might work, which with this one, I want it to be very light, bright, floral type theme. So I'm taking out a lot of trims that even though they're not like historically accurate, like something like this, I think it will look really cute and just really springy and cherry blossomy on here. And I'm trying to avoid trimming it very, very much like my other bonnet with this green and stuff because again this one did somehow match this perfectly and so this one I kind of want to be more just in pinks in general hence all of this pink and cream trim so many laces so I'm just gonna play around with stuff and pleat trims onto this and pin trims onto this and just like lay them all out and see what works and what doesn't because I've got a lot of options and I just want to play with them. I think I have figured out decoration number one on the bonnet, which is that I gathered up that cherry blossom net and I ran gathering stitches, one on each side of the net. And at first I put it onto the outside of the brim because that's kind of how I have this one here with this net gathered on the outside. But I also knew that I mean, that side is not really the side that gets seen as much in an 1830s bonnet, particularly since I am so tall. Everyone kind of looks at me like this. So therefore, I want something framing the face. And this is kind of the trim that I feel like is the biggest pop and the biggest kind of floral effect. And so I really like it on the underside because it gives that lacy look and it also gets that like cherry blossom thing and my goal is to take pictures of this with cherry blossoms. We'll see if that actually happens but that is my goal. At the very least I'll run outside and grab a selfie or something. So I think I'm gonna go with this on the bottom. I will probably be gluing this into place. I don't know. I mean like I would sew it if I would think that I might change it but I don't know that I will want to change it. So I'm not gonna glue it in place until I have all of the trims in and or sew it in place to leave all the trims in. But this is step one. Now I can move on to figuring out the trims on the inside. Also, obviously before I actually put this in place, I do have to put the lining in place. I may also do some really, really thin lace right around there just so it literally like frames my head because that was really, really big. So I might do a little narrow white lace like that but this is at least step one, so quite happy. So I think I have just about figured out the bonnet with the exception that I need to go buy more of this wide ribbon right here. This I actually commandeered from the sash. So the sash is no longer on the dress. It is now on my hat. 
So I need to A, go buy another spool for the sash and B, I actually need another spool for the hat as well, for the bonnet as well. So this is what the front looks like and I'm just gonna turn around so you can kind of see the whole thing. Everything is just pinned in place right now but I think I like what it is doing. I think it's definitely that sort of like, it's it's verging towards where 1830s actually lives, which is like so completely over the top, but it's not hard engineering. Like I didn't wanna to have to figure out how to get the ribbons that big. Also, I don't have that wide ribbons that long. They, they use a lot of ribbon. So I didn't want to mess with all of that. So uh, what I have here, what I where I'm going to put the wide ribbon in is I have this kind of stand in right now, but there's going to be a little one of these here and a little one of these here, and then both of them will have the ribbons hanging down. But I'm pretty darn sure that I like that better out of the wide ribbon, the stuff as opposed to the narrow ribbon, which is what is using to do this, that's the narrow ribbon. And I might put one more strip of narrow ribbon from here to the back to meet it up with the band. But I do really like the pleating that I've done around the band. I really like this wide contrast pink. I think that does really nicely of, of kind of picking up the cherry blossoms and also the pink that's in the dress and just giving it a, a nice contrast because everything else is really the same pink. It's just kind of different sheens. But I do think that it's pretty much right on target for what I want. So I am going to start probably sewing things in because honestly, I don't even know how to go about gluing a lot of this. So I think I am going to have to sew a lot of this, which unfortunately means I don't know when I'm going to finish it. But tomorrow I'm going to go to Joann's and get more of that really wide pink ribbon so that I can do the last little bits and replace the sash. But overall, I think this is the bonnet look that we are going for. I do still have to put that in the lining, which that I am going to glue in probably. And yeah, so I'm going to keep working at this, but it shouldn't look too different from this when it's done. I mean, I don't know though. Do you think it's enough? <laughs> so yeah, I kind of love it. Uh, <laughs> it feels like springtime just like basically is sitting on my head and I'm okay with that. So I'm very excited to wear this new bonnet. <laughs> So that hand sewing thing, that's a total lie. I glued almost everything on this bonnet. This is all glued, this is all glued, this is all glued. All this, yeah, it's glued. I just glued all of the decorations almost entirely. The only thing that I wound up hand sewing was I did hand sew this back seam down the wide ribbon and I also hand sewed all of the lining like edge together right around here but all of this lining by the way I think I forgot to mention how I actually did this but basically I put some glue on the base or really it's the inside top of the crown and then put the round piece in with the little like crenellations cut around the outside so just put that in so the edges would fold up here and then I pressed the edges on this part of the crown so I pressed this edge and then this edge and then I put this part in glued that edge down glued this but made sure that this edge folded perfectly to be the outside of right here and then sewed that down because otherwise the glue like it just doesn't make a solid you know line like right at the edge of where it is glue will go in and out and whatever and look wibbly so that is why I sewed that and also same reason for the ribbon on the back but yeah all of this that's all glued too I just did glue right along the edge there so um the 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 answer about like why do people sew versus glue their hats most people say oh you should sew all your decorations on your hat so that if you want to change your decorations you can but you know what I have changed decorations on a hat exactly once and that's it. One time, out of all of the hats that I made, all of the rest of them have all their original decorations, so I don't plan to change the decorations, and if I did, I could just make a new hat. It's not that big of a deal. So yeah, hence all of the glue. 
So I posted a picture, a bunch of pictures on Instagram of my bonnet, and some people jokingly said that there weren't enough decorations on it. I think it was jokingly said, but I took it seriously, so I added more. So now I made this one into a full rosette, added another strand of ribbon going this way, and naturally some pink feathers as well that I dyed with Kool-Aid ages ago, so I have to make sure I don't get this wet because I don't know if those run. So um, now the hat is finished, bonnet is finished, and I think... It's really quite something. It is now time to move on to the pelerine. So the pelerine for this dress is going to be a little simpler than this one, which was from the Governor Ratcliffe costume from last year. And mostly it's that there's not going to be this separate collar layer. It's all going to be one piece. It's going to come down in a little bit of a v-neck to probably just about here. Like it's going to be a really shallow v, but it is going to be pointed as a v. And then it doesn't have these sort of things. So it will come around just, I think, pretty simply. I was looking at some inspiration on Pinterest and kind of the ones that I was looking at, they're all a little bit flatter in the front. So I'm not really sure the best way to get that shape, whether that's literally to square it off right here and then just come in flat. So I was going to start off by making a round one, just basically taking this point off and making it round right here and then doing that V and without double collar. And I'm going to be using a wider lace trim, or at least that's my intention, for the edges as well. So I may not actually need it to go this wide because there will be wider lace on this. So I think it's going to be a matter of kind of cutting out the large size and then experimenting with it from there. Using this as a pattern, I don't know if I made a paper pattern of this, that would be great. So I'm gonna look and see. Otherwise I am literally just going to take this and use this as a pattern, which frankly I think is just as easy to do maybe as finding the paper one. So I might just do that. And this is made out of cotton organdy, the good lighter weight stuff that I'm used to, cotton organdy. So I am going to go ahead and do that for this new one as well because this worked very well. I mean it feels both fine and yet stiff at the same time because organdy. So yeah I'm going to start with this as a base and go from there. Just so you can see what we're working with to begin with for the shape, this is the Governor Ratcliffe one. And what I've done here is I've kind of just drawn some pin lines out. I didn't want to risk the friction pen on here because I can't remember if it erases all the way. And this is just so nice and white that I don't want to do anything like right through the middle of it. So I've got pin line here for the neckline and then a pin line here for the round shape in the front. But again, I mean, that's kind of one of the ones I'm looking at and it is pretty flat in front. So this may very well change quite a bit, but I'm going to cut it out with this general shape, adding my little seam allowances back in. Of course, these are very narrow seam allowances. I think it's like a three eighths inch that I just turned in twice. And so I'll be adding those back in and then just start with that as a base and go from there. So I have been working on this pelerine while chatting with other costumers and therefore forgot to show you anything. But really all that I've done is I did actually wind up chopping a little bit of the length and I think the width as it curved right here off of the bottom, uh, probably a good inch or two actually of the length and width. And then all I did was I folded all of the edges in twice. So they are all just double folded right now. Some of them are going to get sewn by hand like around the neckline because that's going to be super obvious. But I also went and I just pinned the lace on to see how it would look. This is one that I picked up from Joanne's today. Wasn't sure if I liked it, but actually I think I do. And also I tested it both putting the lace over and also putting the lace underneath and I like it over better. And the thing is, since the over already has a line of machine stitching on there, that means that I can hopefully just machine stitch the whole thing, hem and all. And and yeah, get that done super stat. So I'm gonna do that right now and then I will hand do the rest of this and then that's it really. I mean, I have to cut off the excess lace, but like that's it. Pelerines are easy. Look how adorable this turned out. I really wasn't sure about this lace before, but I'm super happy with it now. This bow is sewn on. So how it closes up is that I did tiny hooks on this side and then over here I did thread bars right there. So there are two of those, one right here, one there. This one is underneath the bow. The bow is sewn on to the police. I can always take it off if I want to use this police with a different outfit. It's not sewn on too much. And in any case, this means that 
we are almost completely done. And the last thing to go on will be a bow probably right here, maybe a bow right here, though I'm not positive. Maybe I'll skip that one. I'm really not sure. And I'm going to decide that tomorrow when I actually go to put this on for the photo shoot. But everything else is done. So overall, I am so super pleased with how this project turned out. I did realize as soon as I got to the park that I had forgotten my sash at home. So no sash in any of these pictures, but you know what? I think it's still really, really cute. And I will have the sash later for future photo shoots. Yeah, because that's still really cute too. I don't even know which I like better, to be honest. They're both cute. I did wind up adding this second bow right here. So I literally sewed this on while I was putting on the dress this morning. Like I was already wearing the dress and I sewed it on like that. So that was entertaining. And then the other thing that I found is that I put a straight pin behind the bow in the pelerine, connecting the pelerine to the bodice because I had already put on the pelerine when I was sewing this. And just from the act of sewing this bow on, my pelerine shifted about an inch and a half. So I think with having that pin there though, it did stay really nicely in place. There were a couple of large gusts of wind as we were heading back to the car in the park that like made the back all blow up and made me have to hold on to my hat. But actually my hair inside 
this bun does such a wonderful job of holding on the hat. I did have three hat pins in the bonnet going through this bun, but this bun is literally the size of the inside of the crown. And so even just having that in there means that the bonnet winds up staying on my head pretty well, not including wind. So again, overall, I am thrilled with this new outfit. My friend Emily, who you've seen before on this channel, she is going to be making a dress for the 1830s out of this fabric as well, because I found a lot of this fabric. And so I'm very, very excited to be twins with her at some point too. She's just starting her dress now. So hopefully in a month or two, we'll get to do another photo shoot with some summer flowers and be twins for that. But in any case, I do really hope that you enjoyed this whole series on this whole project. I cannot wait to wear this again. It just brings me so much joy and springtime goodness. So I am probably going to be releasing a pattern on both the bonnet and also the pelerine. But first I have to figure out how to take something that is like a paper large form and get it into a PDF. So I'll make an announcement on my community tab about that when that does happen, hopefully sometime within the next month. And that way you all can make these as well. And I think that'd be super, super fun for everyone. So if you do want to be notified about that community tab, do make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. And if you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos also from me, also please be sure to click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I do post a new video. I post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to support all the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Kofi accounts down below. And I do want to give a super big shout out to my three Edwardian level patrons, Heidi, Mia Q, and Sharon. So thank you all so much. And thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful week. And I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing. Okay. See you, bye. Do you want to wear a bonnet? <laughs> so ladylike. <laughs> Do not fall. No. I cannot catch you. No. No. <laughs> no. No. Not gonna win too high. But you made the attempt, so you're a strong, independent woman in a bonnet. <laughs>